So recently I came across a man by the name of Owen Benjamin. He's a stand-up comedian, and in my opinion, he's... Eh. Eh, hit or miss. That's not why we're talking about him. We're talking about him because... Well, let him say it for himself. I remember when the meaning of gravity. I remember Last when month, I lost my electric light and telephones and automobiles and there was airplanes so that came available about that only day. last week. That's right. This guy is slightly crazy and your eyes didn't deceive you. That was him on a live stream singing crazy over a JFK speech while a Flat Earth video plays in the top left corner. I- you can't make this stuff up. Now, you might be thinking, he's a comedian, it's a bit, and it's funny, and I would agree with you if he wasn't so serious about it everywhere outside of his comedy. In fact, he- he hardly brings it up. I don't know if he ever brought it up in a routine or whatever. And uh, after I edited this entire video, I looked into him a little bit more, and turns out he's far crazier than what I thought. It's not just Flat Earth stuff. Maybe I'll cover it more in a future video, but uh, this, oh boy. And it seems like he streams somewhere. I have no idea where, but somewhere he's live streaming, and every now and then he'll get up in arms about the shape of the Earth. We're going to look at some of those clips. Yeah, there's the flat earth is not a psyop. Not even close. Oh, it's a psyop to make it insane to question the moon landing. It once if you keep ladling that gravy of moon landing and then get to the next, to the next, to the next, you will get to a point when you realize that this earth is not moving. But it's like on an airplane how you can get up and run around and then it's like, okay, well, first off, you you allege that the earth is a globe, so when it spins, you'd have centripetal force. You would be thrown off constantly. Do you know how a, a teacup works at a at a circus? Okay, so this is the sort of thing we're dealing with here. <laughs> He's been talking about this for a while. Somebody else brought up the fact that you can walk around on the inside of an airplane while it's going, what is it, thousands of miles per hour? I want to say it was 3,000 miles an hour at cruising speed. He he blows that off. He, he doesn't even respond to it. It doesn't seem to get through his head then goes off about the centrifugal force that's how i pronounce it so that it doesn't sound similar to centripetal force which is what keeps us anchored down to the earth gravity we actually do experience the centrifugal force you are lighter on the north or south pole than you are on the equator all other things being equal and your weight actually changes Say, if you're on an airplane traveling one direction uh, over another because of this reason. So he's not wrong, just kind of dumb. Secondly, funny you bring up airplanes. How could an airplane take off and land on a spinning object? Well, the atmosphere turns with it. No, it doesn't unless there's a hard, fast barrier called the firmament. <laughs> the firmament. If you don't know, that's a solid dome that they think is above our flat earth for no reason other than that it says that in the Bible, which it does, doesn't make it true. And he, there's no possible way that the atmosphere could be moving with the ground underneath it. It's not like the ground has friction or terrain, but the atmosphere doesn't even move entirely with Earth's rotation. In fact, the higher up you go, the less it's moving with Earth's rotation and it's causing a Coriolis effect, and that causes a lot of things to happen, especially with the weather, including the uh, polar vortices and hurricanes. Hurricanes can't form on a flat Earth. It's funny that he thinks he's figured it out after all of this, because he's done a little bit more research than everyone else, but um, if he'd just done even more research, you'd find that, um, well, it's like, when you look at it, there's no possible way it's a spinning ball. When you look at it, there's no possible way it's a spinning ball. You, Owen Benjamin, who's probably not watching this, so I, I don't know who I'm pointing at. You. 
You're in the wrong saloon, partner. I reckon the geek. Yeah, exactly. And I'm not a flat earth, like, um, one of those guys that their whole thing is just promoting that. Like, I, I'm to the point where I'm now, like, I don't even want to bring it up that much because it's so obvious. It's kind of like Joe Rogan sodomy. It's so obvious. A lot of flat earthers will say that. It's so obvious. Or my favorite is common sense. They'll say it's common sense. They're trusting their eyes and no one else is. That they basically because it looks flat to them and they can't comprehend abstract thoughts, it's obvious that it's flat. Um, but if you could think about it for like 30 minutes, it's the, the opposite is obvious. Let Earth demonstrate in Bible. Yeah, everything about the Bible says it's, it's, it's not a spinning ball. And then Werner von Braun has Psalm 19.1 on his tombstone. It's, it's amazing. It is amazing. The Bible does indeed describe a flat model of the earth because that's what the ancient Hebrews who wrote it believed back then. The Bible also talks about a behemoth and a leviathan, two mythical creatures. The leviathan, I think, is a bit more interesting. It's a, it's a giant sea serpent that can like swallow whole ships or something to that effect. The Bible talks about um, a couple people who claim to have seen Armageddon, you have the rising dead, you have a dying god. These things sound like a book of mythology more than anything else. I mean, it's not like the Bible's never been wrong about anything. It's been wrong about the census of Quirinius being within the reign of Herod, which it wasn't. And it's wrong about ancient Israelites ever being in ancient Egypt. Two big things that it got wrong. There's no reason to treat it as absolute, 100% incontrovertible fact, everything that it says. So when you're taking your science lessons from this book, instead of, you know, the modern science that we have today, I guess this is what you get. They call it sea level. Well, I mean, guys, every single proof, everyone you can measure says it's flat. Like the rotation of the southern stars in the sky? Like how even a flat earth group themselves have measured with a very expensive gyroscope a 15 degree per hour rotation of something that's sitting still on the earth. You know, folk called pendulums. Or maybe not, who knows. Yeah, this is this is the type of reason why if you if you meet some flat earthers or some people that are just into this stuff, the reason they can be touchy and edgy and kind of a dick sometimes is because like you have to understand a guy like Crow has spent over a decade like studying the sky with with telescopes, recording it, plotting it. He's an incredibly intelligent person, used to be in the Marines. And so to have someone who's done no work at all, none, all they know is what they were told by Neil deGrasse Tyson, you know, be like, you're an idiot. Like, these are the real scientists, if that's even a real thing. But these are the people that are doing the scientific method every day. The scientific method of ob observation, test, form hypothesis, theory, all that, that's what they do, they're doing. And so when you understand that, when you understand that the people that are just regurgitating the rantings of madness said by like a robot wheelchair guy about how the world is, you know, life doesn't matter. That isn't science. That's okay. So that was really hard for me to follow because of all of the rambling. And I don't know, it's something about flat earthers, their, their trains of thought are just, they're unclear, but I take it. He follows some sort of flat earther who maps the sky and the stars and all of that. And because we're just regurgitating Neil deGrasse Tyson and the wheelchair guy, <laughs> that that we're just we're just sheep. There, <sighs> you you allege that the Earth is a globe, so when it spins, you'd have centripetal force. You would be thrown off constantly. Do you know how a a teacup works at a at a circus? Ever been on the gravitron? As it spins, things are flung outwards, and somehow. People, animals, buildings, oceans, and other surface phenomena can stick to the underside of the spinning ball without falling or flying off. 
Take a ride on the Gravitron at your local amusement park, however, and notice how the faster it spins, the more you are pushed away from the center of spin, not towards it. If we were standing on the walls of this, on the, on the walls inside this spinning container, then we would have gravity. Weight is created by this spin. That's real physics. But when it comes to telling us that we actually have the same effect happening to us on the outside of a sphere, this is a total inversion. It is the total opposite of anything that is related to real physics. Yeah? Amateur astronomy is a huge thing. It's a massive hobby. Lots of people do it. And I guarantee you, the vast majority of people who are into astronomy don't think that the Earth is flat. I'm sorry. They do think that the Earth is a spinning globe because that's reasonable. He's, he's getting upset that we're regurgitating Neil deGrasse Tyson and all these guys, despite the fact that these guys do have backgrounds in science, in that these guys are saying the same things that genuine scientists are doing. The scientific community believes the Earth is a spinning globe for good reasons. I promise you. I have to wonder, when these guys start to doubt the, uh, the shape of the Earth, start to doubt the globe model, do, do they not just look up uh, proofs that the Earth is a globe, because you can easily do that, and you can find some pretty good stuff. I mean, heck, if every one of you were to do that right now, I'd be out of a YouTube channel. <laughs> Alright, I started getting bored of that video, let's move on to another one of these clips from his live streams. Earth speed is not constant, as the Earth orbits elliptical orbit. Let that sink in. If you're, uh, if you change 1%, that's 660 miles an hour. That would, that would liquefy all flesh. I, I challenge you to walk on a treadmill at one mile an hour and tell a friend to randomly unplug it. You will trip and you will fall down. I challenge you to hold a coffee that's full to the brim as you drive down the street at 60 miles an hour. Just tap on the brake to go 59. The coffee will spill. Do you know why? Because of the sudden change in speed. It's not the speed itself. It is the change in speed or direction. In other words, we don't feel speed. We feel acceleration. You would know this if you if you went to high school. Let's do some math for a minute. So according to this one website, the speed of Earth's revolution at perihelion is 30,300 meters a second, and at aphelion, 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 it is 29,300 meters per second. So converting that into kilometers an hour, that's a difference of 3,600 kilometers per hour. And in 2019, the difference between perihelion and aphelion is 183 days. So that is a difference of 19.7 kilometers an hour per day. So we divide that by 24 hours. So we get 0.82 kilometers per hour per hour. So I believe that would be one kilometer an hour every 1.8 to two hours. So if you were in a car accelerating at the same rate that Earth is accelerating due to its elliptical orbit, that would be zero to 100 kilometers an hour in 122 hours, or zero to 60 miles per hour every 126 hours, according to my calculations. That acceleration is so slow, you will not 
be able to feel it. Though I neglected to mention that this would be a gravitational acceleration, so you wouldn't actually feel it anyway, no matter what. It's a free fall. It would affect your surroundings, your environment, and your internal organs just as much as everything else. And you're not going to be able to detect it except by pretty precise measuring. But, but no, it's us who just aren't following common sense. It should be obvious, right? Now, even if the, the psychotic people going through the stages of mourning uh, want to say, oh, no, but go, you're, no, you go one mile an hour to 0. 0.97 miles an hour. You would be able to measure it. How do you think that we have that number in front of you right there? We've done it before, and it's actually very interesting uh, how it's done. But no, Owen Benjamin can't measure it. So nobody can measure it, I guess. I don't know. You can do the math on it because the the ellipse is fixed and the time is fixed. I did the math. I, I did. And it's so slow you wouldn't be able to feel it. One year. There's a change of speed every year. Actually, it would be half a year because the elliptical orbit goes... You know what? Why am I even explaining myself? It, it doesn't seem like he completely comprehends exactly what an elliptical orbit is. There is a change of speed every year. M at minimum, one, uh, twice a year, at minimum. The way an ellipse works, zoom, 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 okay. Oh, you know what? I stand corrected. He does know how an ellipse works. It goes zoom, zoom. Perfect, perfect explanation. Does he think that it all happens at once? Because he said it happens once a year, minimum twice a year. Does it like, like slam on the gas? Like all at once? Does the earth just think, oh, sh we're getting too close to the sun. Floor it, floor it. And then when we're getting too far away, it's like, hold up, slam on the brakes. We're getting too far, guys. As if the earth is in a NASCAR race around the sun. And listen, I'm not here to, I've heard the arguments. I hear the arguments all the time. I could read you hundreds of them of cognitive dissonance of people being like, <clears throat> one of the biggest things you'll hear is anger. They're, they're going through the stages of grief. It's not anger so much as frustration. If you're the kind of guy that hears that the earth is accelerating at all and immediately thinks, oh, we can't feel it, we can't measure it. Oh, the earth must not be moving. Oh, the earth must not be a globe. That, surely you can see that's a little bit frustrating. Exactly. The cycle I've been through this year. Yeah, it's that's why I am all about what's next. Building, praying, family. Family is the most important thing in the world. If you're putting your personality and your uh, identity on this stupid shit, you're, you're going to experience pain. It shouldn't be there. Yeah. Come to think of it, I'm an internet personality. But my internet personality is all talking about the flat earth. And believe me, believe me, I am feeling pain. Lots of it. This is our stationary earth. Okay? It's gorgeous. Do you see that lake? Do you think that there would be an effect on the lake if there was a change in the speed of earth? I mean, he says that this, this is beautiful. And maybe he's not wrong, but I like my Earth like I like my TVs. Round and beautiful colors in, in some areas, uh, but most of it is just not pleasing to look at. And it's getting kind of old by now. No, I mean, the eclipse, even though the, the, the sun is 400 times bigger, it's 400 times farther away, so it lines up perfectly. And the moon, it, it doesn't spin because it's a perfect spin. With it. It's just like... That is pretty much like half of what this live stream is. I I think I cut out most of that sort of mimicry, uh, but that's what I've been sitting through for the past hour? Maybe more like half an hour, 45 minutes. So that is a look into the mind of Owen Benjamin, I suppose. But um, I've been at this long enough, as I said before, so I'm gonna end this here. Thank you for watching. Goodbye. Oh wait, don't don't go. Don't go.
I forgot to tell you that uh, this weekend, probably Sunday, I'm going to be streaming the Bible game on PS2, but not here. It's going to be on Twitch. So I'll have a link in the description to my Twitch. If you're not familiar with Twitch, it's just a place where people live stream, usually video games. So uh, I think it could be a little bit of fun. So give me a follow there and hopefully it'll be a good time. Bye. Beethoven knew what the f was going on in NASA.